Yo, a minute past the hour now. Albuquerque's big return to the Breaking Bad TV spotlight is getting some good reviews from critics and fans today. AMC's newest show, Better Call Saul, debuted to a huge crowd of about 100 people at Tractor Brewing on 4th near I-40 last night. The show gives the backstory of the fan favorite character Saul Goodman. Like Breaking Bad, the company behind it is filming all of the show in Albuquerque. Fans who watched it last night say they're hopeful this will turn into another economic boon for the city. You know, when it first started, it didn't have a huge following, you know, and it kind of built over time. Now that following is already there. I think Better Call Saul will not, hopefully not focus so much on the meth, but more like on everything else. And they've already like called out a lot of different places in Albuquerque. Breaking Bad is estimated to have infused about 60 to 70 million dollars into Albuquerque in wages and production spending. Better Call Saul continues its two night premiere tonight on AMC at 8 o'clock. Meanwhile, state lawmakers are trying to lure more TV shows to New Mexico through a new bill. It would remove television from the state's $50 million cap for film tax credits, allowing for more incentives to be given to TV shows. What happens to your online accounts when you die? In New Mexico, it's unclear, and now a state lawmaker is trying to change that. State Senator Peter Worth is pushing a bill that would allow family members or an appointed representative to tap into somebody's online life when they pass away. I think it's really trying to address this new technology that we all have gotten so used to and comfortable with, but you don't often think through all the consequences. Consequences like this Virginia family had to deal with last year. The couple's 15 year old son Ricky killed himself. Police told the couple to get access to Ricky's social media pages to see if there were any clues as to what happened. But Facebook blocked the family from doing so, citing privacy laws. Since Ricky's death, Virginia has passed a law allowing parent account access if a child dies. In New Mexico, no law like that exists. And if this bill makes its way all, th all the way through the legislature, that law would take effect next year. Happening today, city officials are set to serve final warnings to the homeless group still occupying the streets of Tent City. Many aren't going to go easy. For weeks, it's been a hot button issue. The city's push to clear out the makeshift camps and clean up the city streets. But this morning, there are still about a dozen tents set up near First and Iron. The warning gives people there three days to clear out. And by Thursday, the city says anyone still there will be given court papers for an eviction hearing. This comes weeks after volunteers and city officials took time to speak with many of them out there in an effort to get them help they need. In our next half hour, what some homeless campers are now doing to try and establish their own addresses there. Also happening today, cancer patients and survivors ride to Santa Fe to ask lawmakers to continue the fight against cancer. Every year, volunteer advocates make their way to the capital city by loading up on the rail runner. Many will meet at the Los Ranchos station in Albuquerque around 730 for preparation for the day's event. Once there, the group will lobby lawmakers in an effort to work with them on policies that help to prevent, detect, and better treat cancer. Should independent voters be able to vote in primary elections? One Albuquerque voter says yes, and he's filing a lawsuit to try to make it legal. Yeah, tomorrow morning, a judge will hear the case in district court. News 13's Catherine Mazzone joins us live in the Newsplex with what she's learned so far. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. Now, the independent voters attorney filed a lawsuit against the state last summer to partially open New Mexico's primaries to independent voters or those who don't declare an affiliation with a particular political party. Now, it comes after the independent voter wasn't allowed to cast his ballot in last summer's primary election. What more basic right is there in a democracy than the right to vote? And when that's taken away, that is a serious attack on democracy. Ed Hollington is David Crum's attorney, the independent voter who couldn't cast a ballot last year. Hollington argues New Mexico's constitution gives all registered voters the right to vote in all public elections for public offices. But according to the primary system the legislature chose back in 1969, independent voters can't cast their ballots in these elections. Hollington says that means the legislature has violated the state constitution. Now he's hoping a judge will rule in their favor. Independents would go to the primary election they would ask for either a Democrat or a Republican ballot, or if there was another major party, they could ask for that, and then they would cast their vote, votes on those parties. Now, Hollington says opening up the elections would not result in Democrats being able to vote for Republicans and vice versa. He says he would expect both parties to be on board, but 
The Republican Party actually filed a response asking the judge to dismiss the lawsuit. We'll hear from them in our next half hour. Back to you, Crystal. All right, thanks, Catherine. Now, there are nearly 250,000 registered independent voters in New Mexico. The big reason they want change, Hollington says in the past June primary, more than 60 percent of all the positions on the ballot were decided in the primary election. Time is 606. We're staying on top of the latest in an Albuquerque shooting where police say a shop owner shot a would be thief in the back. It happened just before 8 Saturday night at the Hydro Life Store on Manal near Washington. Police tell News 13 an armed thief walked into the shop, grabbed a plant growing light and tried to run off with it. But the owner chased him down and shot at him. The man who was hit was taken to UNM Hospital. He's in critical but stable condition. It's unclear right now if the owner will face any charges. We did some digging this morning and found out that SpaceX will try and launch a space weather satellite later today. This after having to scrub yesterday's launch. Now this is important to us because those same rockets could soon be launching from Spaceport America. That's near Tier C. Just yesterday, the countdown was halted at the two and a half minute mark at Cape Canaveral in Florida because of a problem with a rocket Just tracking system. Now, according the to the companies. Launching. Website. They're expected to retry at about four o'clock our time. The company wants to try and land a leftover booster on an ocean platform again. This, despite last month's failed attempt. With the fate of an American hostage held by ISIS still uncertain today, Jordan is keeping up with airstrikes against the militant group. ISIS claims one of those airstrikes killed 26-year-old Kayla Mueller of Arizona, but U.S. intelligence officials say they cannot confirm her death yet. Over the past three days, the Jordanian Air Force has attacked dozens of Islamic State targets in retaliation for the group's execution of its pilot. More bodies have been recovered from Air Asia Flight 8501. Seven bodies were found in the Java Sea on Friday and Saturday, bringing the total number of bodies found to 100. It's believed one of the bodies recently recovered is that of the pilot. Meantime, divers will work again today to try and raise the fuselage of the plane after several previous failed attempts. The Air Asia flight went down on December 28th with 162 people on board. Big topic here, the measles and health leaders are warning parents not to hold measles parties. It's a practice you might have heard of with chicken pox, like you see here on Facebook. We have a Facebook group that we tapped into there. Facebook groups of parents were hoping to get their children together to spread the virus in order to build immunity. But now there's concern the same parties might happen for the even more dangerous and contagious disease of measles. It's rare for children to die from measles, but one in 1,000 do die. Other children get permanent brain damage. The Department of Health is strongly against intentional exposure, causing it, calling it potential grave and contributing it to further spread of the outbreak. Still to come, how about adding a little spice to your meal? It could not only kick up the dish, but also your energy Ooh. level, and there's the side benefit, too. That sounds Kristen, thanks. We're staying on top of the search now for a man who police say is armed and dangerous. Take a look at this picture. It's 34-year-old Kenneth Vest. Los Lunas police say Vest is wanted for aggravated battery, assault with a deadly weapon, and kidnapping. Police say if you see him, do not approach him. Just call Los Lunas police instead. Time is 632. He says the state's violating his constitutional right to vote, and now one independent voter is suing so he can have the right to cast his ballot in the primary elections. Now at this time, Republicans and Democrats can only vote for their party in primaries, leaving out voters who have not declared any affiliation. They did it, that didn't fly with one voter, though. He's now suing the state, but one party is hoping the judge will throw the case completely out. News 13's Catherine Mazzone is here with the latest. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. The independent voters attorney says last summer over 60% of all positions on the ballot were decided in the primary election. He tells me the primary law violates the state constitution, which allows for all qualified voters to cast their ballots in all open elections. These are public elections. All taxpayers pay for these elections. And I, I find, find it uh, astounding that the party would take a position they have the right to deny someone the right to vote in a publicly funded election. Now that's Ed Hollington, the attorney for independent voter David Crump. But attorneys for the New Mexico Republican Party say current state law protects their rights. The legislature passed a law more than 30 years ago preventing those who don't affiliate with a certain party from voting in primary elections. The attorney representing the state's Republican Party says 
that law is not unconstitutional. In fact, he says requiring a voter to affiliate with a certain party in advance of the election doesn't mean it's a closed election. He adds Hollington's proposal of letting independents choose a certain party's ballot at the polls just isn't enough. The attorney says the primary is an internal process and current law protects the party's right to freedom of association. The plaintiff's view uh, really seems to rest entirely on the New Mexico Constitution uh, while disregarding the freedom of association afforded to political parties under the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Now Anderson tells us he doesn't believe there's a conflict between the state and federal constitution. But if there was, the federal constitution would trump New Mexico's. The Republican Party asked the judge to dismiss the lawsuit. Back to you. All right, thanks for that information, Catherine. Now, there will be a hearing on the lawsuit tomorrow morning at district court. We'll let you know what happens. New numbers this morning show nearly 19,000 people in the Albuquerque area have signed up for health care coverage through Insurance Marketplace as of the end of last month. That includes those re-enrolled statewide, a little over 44,000 people registered by January 30th. It's the first time the federal agency has released numbers by city statistical area. The deadline for open enrollment is February 15th. Those who are not signed up could face tax penalties. We're following the latest in the dismantling of Tent City in downtown Albuquerque. This yeah, morning. today city officials are expected to give homeless campers a final warning to clear out. There are still about a dozen tents near First in Iron. Those still there have written addresses now on the curb in shock, nicknaming the street Tent City Tent Ready City Trail. The final warning will mean people there will now have three days to clear out. By Thursday, they will be given court papers for an eviction hearing. The city says it wants the homeless group gone because of safety and crime concerns and neighbor complaints. City advocates have been out handing out hotel vouchers, bus passes and hygiene kits for the last couple weeks, hoping to get people to go somewhere else. Well, lots of people have left. Some say they have nowhere else to go. I don't have a place to go. This is my house. This is where I live. I don't care. They take me to jail. Well, I will get out. I do nothing wrong. APD has also set up one of its mobile cameras at the tent city site. Once it is clear, the city wants to spruce up the pathway to better link the rail yards and downtown. The city is now asking for your input in helping with a heavily traveled neighborhood. One of the largest employers in the state is Kirtland Air Force Base. The busiest gate is located on Eubank Boulevard with 27,000 cars driving in and out of the base every day. Now city officials are asking people to fill out surveys, which would help them with some new studies to lend, uh, lead to improvements in design and construction for the Willowwood neighborhood. We have a link to those surveys on our website right now at KRQE.com. And now 636, New Mexico and Texas companies could soon find themselves in a bidding war to see who gets to store the nation's high-level nuclear waste. A Dallas-based company has made a bid to store high-level nuclear waste from around the country at a rural facility along the New Mexico-Texas state line. Meanwhile, the Eddy Lee Energy Alliance has its eyes on building a similar facility in New Mexico. It could take years for the feds to license any facility. 637 right now, artists and Bernalito County officials want to create an art project to welcome people into Albuquerque's South Valley. They're going to be holding a series of meetings to gather stories, history, photos of the South Valley. The plan is to use art renderings of the community's history on the Isleta Bridge Boulevard entrance. The project is funded by a grant. The first meeting is scheduled for February 17th at the National Hispanic Cultural Center, and we'll update you on how that goes. Keep, keep an eye on it. It seems like New England just can't catch a break these days as the region braces for another winter storm, but officials say they are prepared for this round of snow. That area could get as much as two feet in some places. New York, Connecticut, Vermont, and New Hampshire could also see heavy snow this week. In Massachusetts, crews have been prepping the roads for days. There won't be a statewide travel ban this time around, but offices and schools will be closed today. The big issue with this storm is not the storm itself per se. It's the cumulative impact of this storm coming on top of uh, 60 inches of snow that have already fallen over the course of the past 13 days. In Boston, cars are still buried from recent storms. Snowbanks tower over pedestrians, and parking is almost impossible to find. In Maine, people are once again rushing to get supplies like salt and shovels. Newly released video, take a look at this, shows Florida police trying to rescue a driver from a car 
engulfed in flames. The crash happened early Friday morning. The driver of the white car is seen here tried to pass another car but ended up hitting it, then losing control. The driver then hit a palm tree. That's when the car went up in flames. Very dramatic video there. Police pulled the man out of the car. He later died, though, at a hospital. The driver of the other car was shaken up but was able to walk away from that wreck unharmed. Brian Williams won't be behind the anchor desk tonight. For the first time since a scandal broke, nightly news will be going on without him temporarily. This after his claim that he was aboard a military helicopter when it came under fire over Iraq in 2003 met questions from the helicopter's crew. In a memo to his colleagues Saturday afternoon, Williams wrote, quote, I have decided to take myself off of my daily broadcast for the next several days, end quote. He goes on to write, upon my return, I will continue my career-long effort to be worthy of the trust of those who place their trust in us.